Okay, everybody, welcome back to another networking video. Uh, this time I'm going to talk a little bit more about iSCSI. Now, this goes in conjunction with the ESXi video and the free NAS install video. And um, I may have mentioned in, in one of those videos that the communication that's used between the storage and the hypervisor chassis is iSCSI. And so I thought I would take just a few minutes here and chat with you a little bit about this particular protocol. So SCSI, uh, we'll start there before we get to iSCSI, we'll start with SCSI, or Small Computer System Interface, is what we call block level storage. And block level storage means that the data is transferred in straight up chunks. And these chunks of data or these blocks of data comprise a file. And each one of the, the chunks of data has an address associated with it. Now SCSI has been around for a long, long time. There are lots and lots of commands, lots and lots of flexibility in, uh, in the SCSI protocol. So it really didn't matter what kind of device you were connecting. As long as it obeyed the SCSI commands, then you could use and access the device for whatever it was being used for. So you might be talking about a CD drive or storage or, or something of that sort. It's what we call a producer-consumer model in the sense that uh, an initiator would access or request access to the device via a, a set of operational codes, which we'll see later on, and then the device would respond with whatever you asked for. Now, you could actually connect a whole bunch of these devices together, and then at the end we had this thing called a terminator, and you had SCSI cables and SCSI adapters, you could have internal SCSI hard drives, you could have external devices, and that's all fine, but what we're trying to do here is trying to understand a little bit of the background so that we can apply or we can modify this interface, packetize it, and place it on a network. So a little bit more about uh, our background here. Now, we've been talking about SCSI, but we're going to go to iSCSI here, and there's our RFC reference. So it is a, a collection of of commands or fields that you would use to access your device. So if you had a device, and you can see some in the bottom here connected, so there's a, on the, all the way on the right you can see that computer, and then all of those are SCSI cables connected to SCSI devices. And the last one uh, has a terminator on it on the bottom side underneath there. It's really small, I don't know if you can see it. So you request access to these devices or you request to use them, and really what we're doing is moving information around. The object or the thing that you're accessing is referred to as an LU or logical unit. And so each logical unit has a number. And so a lot of times when you're talking SCSI, you talk about LUNs or the logical unit number that goes along with that device. So in our um, use case here, it's very much a client server architecture. We'll see that here in a little bit because you're going to actually establish a TCP connection with your with the storage so the side establishing the connection is called an initiator and then you're going to go out and go after what we call a target right initiators issue the SCSI command so in our case um, when we're accessing from the hypervisor we build a storage adapter and then we access say a VM that's resident on the storage device when we want to use that or access it, we're going to issue these commands. Now, the thing that ties all of this communication together is the logical unit that we're using for the for the connection. So the the transport mechanism that we're really talking about here is an iSCSI protocol. Remember that I've mentioned commands and responses and all that, but really, just like anything else, this is wrapped up inside a protocol and we'll see a packetized version of that here in a little bit. The initiator is just one side of that, and the, the portal, the target, are the other side. These two sides of the connection are what actually we're going to use to establish the client-server connection between the two sides. Now, iSCSI, RFC 7143, um, is the packetized version of that. We're not connecting de devices directly to our hardware anymore. We're going to have a network interface and we're going to uh, get to a connection from our hypervisor chassis in our case, our ESX box, 
and then that's going to go over the network to our free NAS box, which is going to be running um, iSCSI in between them. Now there are some general guidelines. Uh, there's lots and lots of ways to set up storage, but you want to have some fast links. Sometimes we even aggregate links, do a little bit of load balancing, things like that. Uh, so that's why we sometimes think about redundant links. You want to keep your storage traffic away from the same uh, switching hardware that you have for your production traffic, etc., etc. All right, just a little more on RFC 7143. It is a ginormous RFC, very, very large, and that's because it tries to pack all of this stuff into a single RFC. If you need a little uh, sleep tonight to get some good rest, go start reading the iSCSI RFC. But if you can at least get through the first couple of sections, that'll actually be good to show you how it, uh, how it operates. So remember that it's, it's taking all that traditional SCSI communication and packetizing it and establishing establishing a TCP-based client-server connection. Generally speaking, there are three parts to this. Now, the, the client-server connection is going to be established on port 3260. That's TCP layer 4 port 3260. And what we're going to build is a portal and an initiator. And really, these are the two networking components that describe um, who's allowed to connect to this thing and maybe the the destination that we're going to that we're going to use for the network connection. So, and we're going to tie these two things together in our target. So, the portal, the initiator, and the target all go together to sort of wrap up the networking side of things. The extent is actually the storage. So, when we were going through our free NAS build, uh, and I think I pointed you to another video of a guy that uh, did a really nice job with free NAS 9.2. Uh, the extent is actually the the storage volume. Well, that's great. So you have networking side and you have the storage volume, but we still have to find a way to tie those together. And so when you have an extent, you associate that extent with a particular target. And there you have the beginnings or at least the free NAS side of your iSCSI connection. These guys together, when it's all together, you have this logical unit. Okay, we've already said client-server architecture over TCP. Um, okay, yeah, I/O devices, blah blah blah. Right. Okay, so the SCSI task. So you have something you want to do. So you're going to issue issue a command, and then you're going to get a response as a result of that. And there's a very particular structure for this. It's called the command descriptor block, um, and Sometimes you'll see the direction of traffic flow in an iSCSI connection described. And so outbound is initiated the target. So in our case, that would mean the outbound would be from the hypervisor chassis to the storage box. Inbound is coming back from the target. And here's a look at the, the protocol data unit header for iSCSI. This comes right out of the RFC, and you can see that the field's there. But the big one that's important to us is the opcode, and then based on your opcode, the other fields are populated. And then we've got a, a, the initiator task tag and the LUN. So these are things that are specific to your device and uh, the identifier that keeps all of the traffic together. All right, so I include these in the video. I don't want to go through them uh, in depth with you right now. These are just the definitions for those fields. They're pretty straightforward, uh, like any protocol. Uh, maybe some important things to pay attention to would be the opcode there, because the opcode, and there's the RFC section for it, describes what you're trying to do. So when you're looking at an iSCSI packet, you can see, based on the opcode, what's happening, and then there's a logical unit number that ties this to a device. If you only have one iSCSI device or connection out there, it's not a big deal, but sometimes you might have multiple, in which case the LUN helps us tie that together. And here is an example of an iSCSI uh, packet. See that I've sort of uh, highlighted a couple of things here. There is the opcode. And then the associated fields, again, once the opcode is identified, the rest of the packet sort of fills those in based on the opcode. And then we've got our logical unit number and the logical unit number or LUN specific sort of fields there. And, um, and then we've got 
you know, what we're actually doing with this particular packet all the way at the bottom there, the CDB inquiry. But that's just an example of packetized traffic. So if you were actually going to set up a monitor session or um, you were going to get in the middle of the iSCSI stream, this is actually one example of all of the iSCSI traffic that you would see. Well, I think that'll do it for this particular video. I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight or a little greater insight into what's actually happening when you set up iSCSI. It's an actual protocol uh, that, that has a set of commands and responses that are all about your access to the data. Now, you can sort of under, understand that when you introduce all of this overhead, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a performance hit when you compare it to, say, directly connected storage or storage that is on this massive storage area network. But there you have it, iSCSI running between, in our case, a free NAS box and ESX. Uh, so don't forget to go back. If you're a little lost here, if you jumped into the middle, go back and take a look at the, uh, the videos that were the ESXi and the free NAS builds. Remember also that there are lots and lots of ways to connect your storage to your infrastructure. We went over one. It happens to be an iSCSI build. Um, I would encourage you when you're, if you're deploying this for an actual production network, you want to isolate your storage traffic. Think about things like redundant connections or load balancing connections to your storage boxes. High speed connections are always a plus. So what you saw in the videos was a restricted sort of build that we had to because we were limited on the amount of equipment we had. Well, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. Remember that this is networking. You can do this. And hey, may your packets always reach their destinations.